Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Closet. My name is Kevin and tonight it's time for my favorite thing, a blind tasting. Let's roll the title and get into this thing. Hello, this is me from the future. The theme of tonight's blind tasting turned out to be double oaked bourbons. And the two bourbons that I'm tasting here are the Heaven's Door Double Oaked Bourbon in glass A and the Woodford Reserved Double Oaked Bourbon in glass B. A very interesting heads up tasting that I put in my blind pool selection a long time ago that I've been really looking forward to. Let's find out which of these two Double Oaked Bourbon is more to my preference. Here we go. Starting off with the nose on glass A. That's beautiful. Oh, that's lovely. It seems kind of soft right now. I don't think it's very proofy. I'm getting kind of a light caramel and a light dusty corn. Oh, it just smells really nice. It's got a nice kind of rich color going too. Uh, first reaction, I think maybe I'm picking up a bit of a rye kind of character too. It smells really good. Maybe a little bit of a banana. Let's dive in. Mmm. Whoa. Wow. Holy barrel spice, Batman. Oh, that's very barrely. Immediately. Beautiful oak, beautiful spice. Pretty reasonable finish. Mm-hmm. Very um, drying around the back outside of the tongue. You get that, not tanniny like a red wine tannin, but almost in that same kind of space where you get that little bit of a dry impact. This one's in sort of the mouth-watering territory where that dryness causes your mouth to water, and I love when that happens. Oh, I don't know what that is, but it's nice. Again, so much barrel. Maybe this is some kind of double-barreled product. The barrel is fairly aggressive, and it's without question the predominant flavor. I feel like there's some rye on the nose, but the flavor is so dominated by the barrel that I'm not sure if I'm tasting any kind of rye spice or not. <gasps> Murphy Dog! Oh my goodness! Hi, come into the closet! I got a visitor tonight! This is my dog Murphy. She's the sweetest girl, yes she is. All right, let's take a look at Glass B now. The color on this is insanely dark. That is wild! Oh, wow. That is rich. Oh, very interesting. Huh. That, there's a, there's a scent smack dab in the middle of that, of the way that this smells. Oh, that's lovely. I don't know what that is. It's kind of in the earthy direction. A little, like, mossy forest floor kind of thing happening. Let's give her a go. Totally not what I was expecting. Very light. What the heck is this thing? Again, a little rye spice, but maybe, maybe that's more oak. Maybe I'm sort of conflating oak and rye spice tonight. Wow. That has a lot of barrel impact. Without being vanilla. Uh, maybe this is a higher aged bourbon or maybe this is a double oaked. It doesn't really, I don't know. It's very hard to say. It's not really hitting me in the face as being kind of double oaked. Oh, the caramel on the nose is so rich. Wow. And something else, that other earthy note. This is a very interesting bourbon. I don't know. I want to say maybe that's age. It's so rich, big round flavors, but laced all the way through with barrel. And it finishes with a lot of leather and that drying impact, little tobacco notes on the end. The nose is beautiful. It's a little thin though. Like I wish it was a little more viscous and brought a little more mouthfeel. It's just a little bit thin. There's this kind of honeyed sweetness, caramel kind of sweetness, and then 
big time barrel impact, all that spiciness, slight drying, mostly back of the mouth, back of the tongue. That, that feels like it might be kind of a special age sort of thing. I'm gonna head back into glass A, see if it presents differently now by comparison. Wow, that nose is so different. Big time herbally spicy stuff going on here. Definitely picking up oak. Very distinctive. That's that seems very different. Very unique. Something it's my mind right now is going wry, but it's uh it's different. It's it is it's not it's you know banana y or there's like a kind of a funky fruit, but it's not like all the way into like a classic fruit note. Kind of a bready thing too. Oh, it's funky. Oh, it's funky. Oh, where is it going? What is it? What is it doing? Where? Ooh. Oh, that takes a hard left turn in the middle of the palate. Very herbal and floral. Finishes with a little bit of barrel. Interestingly, on my first pass through, I was finding a lot of barrel. I almost thought it might have been double oaked if I remember correctly. But comparing it to glass B, like the oak has vanished. Glass B has so much more oak impact that glass A now is just coming across as this floral herbal experience. It's a pleasant thing and it's got that barrel impact at the very end that balances out some of those floral notes, but the florals and herbal characters are definitely the, the primary factor I'm getting now coming back to it. Gosh, what an interesting comparison this is. Little weird, little weird. Let's head back to glass B. Wow. Whoa. I don't know if this just opened up because a little bit of time passed. That has got a very interesting impact happening. Oh, the baking spices, major bread pudding vibes. Little bit of red fruits in there too. Oh, wow. Decadent. Oh, decadent English desserts. Fascinating. The palate does not match. That nose sets you up. There's so many interesting things in the nose and the palate is simple. Caramel, barrel, little thin, little dry. This is an interesting one. These are so different. They're playing in different spaces. Uh, I wanna pick a preference and the preference that I'm going to pick is glass B. I like how rich it is. I love the nose. I like the barrel impact that it brings. A little bit of the caramel. It's a little more like up the middle in terms of classic bourbon profile. Glass A is very different. It's got that rye herbalness, definitely a little like, yeah, you know, yeah. Forest floor kind of earthiness, but there's a honeyed sweetness that rides above all of that. It's very nice, it's very different, and I like them. Let's find out <laughs> what they are. 9Y and 9X. Let me go look it up, I'll be right back. Well, it's another super interesting tasting. When aren't they? Glass A turns out to have been Heaven's Door Double Barrel Whiskey. And Glass B was Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. This was amazing. I thought that the Woodford Reserve Double Oaked was some special aged product. It has this like richness to it that was really throwing me. Uh, tonight, it didn't hit me very sweet. And normally I find Woodford Double Oak to be this nice, sweet, well-balanced product. Tonight it was hitting me as like strongly oak impact with a lot of interest, but a little thin. The little thin isn't that surprising. We're talking 45.2% and 90 proof. Here's the other thing we're talking though. Woodford Reserve. I like a lot. It proves itself again and again and again when I do it in blind tastings. I'm always surprised. I almost always pick it in the pairings that I've put it in and again tonight. Go ahead and check my top five best bourbons for beginners video, which I'll probably link in the, up the, in the, on the YouTube-y. Click the thing, go watch the video. Uh, because I picked it as one of my best 
five bourbons to introduce to a beginner. And good, because it won. Uh, I know from uh, just sipping on these that I like both of these a lot. And I know that when I drink the Heaven's Door on its own, I enjoy it. And I don't pick up on a lot of those herbal and floral notes. When I compare it side by side with the Woodford, though, those herbal and floral notes are so forward that it easily loses. The Woodford is just so much richer and more caramel and just, you know, more straight ahead and nice bourbon notes, really, uh, which is not a knock. That's a good thing. Those are notes that I like. I didn't bother scoring either of these bourbons tonight. I have this elaborate scoring system that sometimes I forget to use. I've explained in prior videos. Uh, do you find the scoring useful? Would you like to see me score these? Or is scoring not relevant? Is it enough just to pick a favorite and move on with our days? If you're up for it, let me know in the comments if you want to score things or scoring doesn't matter. To sign off tonight, I wanna to say thank you. Uh, I know that in the grand scheme of things, uh, YouTube things, that this channel is teeny tiny still and completely irrelevant and dumb. And that's what it was always supposed to be. I started this as a complete lark. I spent absolutely zero money on YouTube production, YouTube setup, anything. I told myself that if I hit 50 subscribers, I would purchase a microphone. And I have done this. This is the first video using the new microphone and I hope that you could tell the difference. I hope it sounds a lot better. We'll find out when I edit it. Heck, I don't even know yet, uh, but we'll find out soon. But at the time that I'm recording this, we have over 70 subscribers on this stupid thing that I do in my basement in a closet. Uh, and that's amazing. And thank you so much to all of you who are watching. I really appreciate it. I've gotten so much positive feedback from people on this and have been very surprised by that. Yeah, if you haven't already, you can click the subscribe button. Uh, always click the thumbs up button. YouTube loves when you click the thumbs up button. It helps me out. It makes other people discover the video, which is nice. Uh, I don't I don't have another goal. If we hit a hundred subscribers, maybe I'll get better lighting. <laughs> I don't know. It's silly, but it's fun. And thanks again for coming along for this silly ride. I really appreciate it. Uh, this has been another episode of The Whiskey Closet. And I will see you again next time. Goodbye.